Okay, from uh, our development so far, we've learned that we can transfer the flow uh, around a circular cylinder in the zeta plane to, um, to flow around uh, a Joukowsky cylinder and uh, more, more particularly to a, a Joukowsky airfoil in the Z plane. Um, and, uh, and we do this by offsetting the cylinder in the zeta plane over to um, the singularity of the transformation uh, for r uh, at r minus epsilon. Uh, r minus epsilon is that uh, singularity uh, from the transformation. And so we offset that cylinder. And uh, let me just draw that here. A little bit offset here. So we'd have a, a cylinder offset where uh, one of those singularities now coincides uh, with the surface of the cylinder. And uh, and actually let's let's uh, let's actually make one change over here. We're going to offset the cylinder in the uh, uh, not only on the real axis but on the imaginary axis. So we're offset at some place zeta naught. Okay. Okay, and by definition, we have set that so that the um, uh, so that the singularity there falls on the surface, and by doing that, it creates a cusp uh, on the in the z plane at that point and uh, creates basically the trailing edge of our airfoil. All right, um, so so here we have the equation for the velocity in the zeta plane. So this is just simply flow over a circular cylinder in the zeta plane uh, where that cylinder is offset by zeta naught. It's coming in at some angle of attack alpha and depends on the radius of the cylinder. Um, it also depends on the amount of circulation of, uh, uh, going on uh, within that cylinder. And so how much, basically how much we're rotating the flow as it comes past the cylinder, okay? So, um, so that's something we haven't talked about. What's the value of the circulation that makes sense here? Well, that's related to uh, the cutta condition, which you're familiar with. The cutta condition says that on an airfoil, uh, the flow needs to leave that trailing edge uh, parallel. With a cusp trailing edge, it's gotta be parallel with that trailing edge. Uh, or if, if you don't have a cusp, uh, it's the average of the upper and lower angles there. Uh, but basically, that trailing edge needs to be a stagnation point in the flow, and, and the flow needs to, to leave perpendicular to that point. Um, and so, uh, since that's a stagnation point in the Z plane, we also want that point there to be a stagnation point in the zeta plane. Um, okay, and so uh, that's basically our, our the piece of information that, we're, that we need in order to solve for the the uh, vortex strength gamma in the zeta plane, uh, we want to choose a value that will make this point a stagnation point of the flow in the zeta plane so that that maps then to the trailing edge and, and makes uh, the trailing edge in the z plane also a stagnation point. Okay, so, uh, so basically what we're going to do is set this equation uh, equal to zero. We're going to say that at zeta t at the trailing edge, if I plug in zeta at the trailing edge, uh, it, so it's zeta of t, and uh, and it appears here in the equation and here in the equation. So um, if I plug in zeta of t, I want the, the velocity to be equal to zero, okay? So then we can just uh, solve this equation, and um, what we'll get is that gamma equals 2 pi v infinity over i, times r squared e to the i alpha over zeta t minus zeta naught uh, minus zeta t minus zeta naught e to the minus i alpha. Okay, so, so we solve for the value of gamma uh, as a function of, uh, of zeta t and zeta naught um, but, uh, but it will be helpful for us to recognize that zeta t is related actually to zeta naught because, um, remember we had to, uh, uh the, the trailing edge there, 
uh, over here depends on uh, the size of the circle and the, the offset of zeta naught. So, so zeta t, uh, we found earlier, was equal to, you can just do some geometry to figure out um, uh, what the value is here, and uh, we found that it's equal to, to uh, the square root of r squared minus eta naught squared, where eta is the, is the offset um, in the imaginary axis, uh, and then plus uh, c naught, which is the offset uh, along the real axis. Okay, so now if we take zeta t minus zeta naught, that's actually the, the quantity that we need over here. Uh, if we subtract those two, then what we're going to get is the square root of r squared minus eta naught squared. Uh, and then we'll have a, this c naught will, will uh, cancel with the c naught inside of this zeta naught. And we'll be left with a minus i eta naught. Okay, so now... Uh, this expression for zeta t minus zeta naught will plug in uh, in these two locations here. And uh, we can rearrange this equation now and get gamma equals 4 pi v infinity times the square root of r squared minus eta naught squared times the sine alpha uh, plus eta naught cosine alpha. Okay, so this is the value of gamma that will make this point a stagnation point in the flow, and uh, and then by default, then uh, this this trailing edge will be a stagnation point and satisfy the cutter condition, uh, and that requires this much circulation. Okay, so this value of circulation uh, we're going to find is related to the amount of lift that this airflow is producing. Uh, but uh, but basically, once we know that the offset of this cylinder, zeta naught, uh, and the angle of attack, um, we can compute, and the, and the free stream velocity, we can compute the circulation that will make that a stagnation point that, that satisfies then the cut of condition.